So brothers and sisters, peace and welcome today. I know we've got visitors from Boston, perhaps some from Taiwan as well. Today is Worldwide Communion Sunday, so it's good to have friends visiting from afar. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, Thank you that we can gather in Jesus' name to worship and adore you, to sing your praises, to study your word, to prepare our hearts to share together in the Lord's Supper. Lord, may you speak through the scriptures and speak through the words that I prepared and that Ronald would translate. Lord, may you feed us and help us to walk in Jesus' way glorify you and be your faithful servants always. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus' teaching for us today divides into three important topics. Uh, Forgiveness, faith, and duty. These teachings are part of what we might call the hard sayings of Jesus. They, they can be a little hard to understand. We see Jesus using some kind of extreme, even exaggerated language in these sayings. You listen for Jesus' voice and he doesn't sound very nice all the time in, this, in these things. The, the picture of Jesus, when you think of Luke 17, it, it's a little different than Jesus as kind and caring and compassionate. Jesus is our Lord. He wants us all to, to trust in Him and to obey Him. In this section of Luke's Gospel, Jesus has been using parables and sayings to teach His disciples how to serve God. And, and what Jesus has been teaching his disciples applies to us who, who want to follow Jesus today as well. In Luke 17, in that first section, verses 1 to 4, Jesus teaches us about sin and forgiveness. We know that things happen in our daily lives that can tempt us to, to follow our, our human desires and rather than obeying God. Our modern culture, no matter what country we're from, our, our modern culture is full of all kinds of attractions that can easily lead us away from doing God's will. And sin, and sin can creep into our lives, it can creep into the church when we are, if we're ignoring God or disobeying God's command. And sometimes those sins, they creep in, but they, they can grow to, they get so big that they can cause us to stumble and to fall. <laughs> Jesus knows how weak we human beings are, which is why he wants to protect us from sin and from any evil. So in this passage, we see Jesus pronouncing a very strong woe, uh, a strong word, woe to anyone who would cause another person to stumble or to fall. Okay, so, 
And then Jesus uses very, very strong language to discourage anyone from harming one of God's little ones. Sin can harm a person's life. It can, can harm our families, our church, our communities. So Jesus wants to, us to guard ourselves from sin or causing anyone else to sin. Now on, on the flip side, what, what about if someone sins against me? What if someone sins against us? Here Jesus teaching is primarily concerned with relationships in our families and in the church. We heard it in the modern English translation this morning. And uh, if a brother or a sister sins against us, you say, if your brother or sister sins against you, Jesus said, rebuke them, and if they repent, forgive them. And then Jesus continues. Jesus says that even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times they come back to you and they say, I repent, you must forgive them. Notice first that there, there is a proper place for rebuking or correcting someone who may have sinned against us. And the goal, of course, the goal of correcting someone is so that the, the person will actually repent from their sin, that they'll say sorry that they've committed it, that they will make restitution and, and then they can receive forgiveness. The goal is to restore broken relationships, to restore a loving communion with both God and with one another. The path, this, this path, this process to forgiveness and restoring of good relationships, we know that sometimes it's not easy, that it it can take a long time. And we hear that Jesus using this exaggerated language. If, if they sin against you seven times in one day, and, and then if they repent seven times the same day, forgive them. I think we can agree that Jesus' point is, is very clear here. It's better to forgive a brother or sister than to withhold forgiveness. And this applies to, to one another as brothers and sisters in our families and in the church. It's better to forgive. It's better to let go of any pain or hurt that someone may have caused us to, to let it go and not be weighed down by that pain and hurt. Jesus knows, and I think we know too, don't we, that if if we don't forgive someone, it, it, it's like a kind of like a toxic chemical that can build up inside your, your stomach or your heart. Uh, an unforgiving heart, it's it's it can harm ourselves and it can harm those that we love, those who are who are next to us. 
Now, at the same time, it, it doesn't seem fair, does it? it? It may not even seem right. It, it seems kind of hard that, that Jesus would lay this burden of forgiving someone who sinned against us, that he lays that, that burden on me or on you. But the way to, to healing, the way to wholeness really is to, to forgive that brother or sister. No wonder we hear the apostles when they when Jesus has taught them this, they cry out and say, Well, Lord, increase our faith. Who, who has this kind of faith that can can so easily forgive someone who sinned against us? Yet we confess that with the grace of God we can indeed trusting in Jesus Christ we can forgive someone who sinned against us. We can remember Jesus himself when he was hanging on the cross. Remember how Jesus looked down on those who had, had, had been mocking him and abusing him, the, the soldiers who, who nailed him to the cross. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God can give us faith too, faith like this. God can strengthen our will so that we can forgive someone who may have sinned against us as well. This morning the choir sang beautifully the Lord's Prayer for us. And in Luke's version of the Lord's Prayer, we, we hear this. Uh, forgive us our sins. Uh, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Uh, and lead us not into temptation. Uh, Friends, Jesus wants us all to have strong faith in Him. Uh, here in Luke 17, verse 6, Jesus says that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it will obey. And if you were looking in Matthew or Mark's version of Jesus saying, he says that this small mustard seed faith in God, with, it, with this kind of small mustard seed faith in God, you can even move mountains. And again, we're seeing Jesus using strong and figurative language here. But the point, I think you'd agree, is very clear. A little bit of faith in God can accomplish great things. We've just been thinking about the faith to forgive someone who sinned against us. We could think in a more general way, too, of, of our faith in God. That trusting in God, we can do great things for God and for the kingdom of God. We, think, we could think this morning of, of those great heroes in the faith in Hebrews chapter 11. Think of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. 
啊，咱知影即个阿布拉罕啊，阿阿泽罗阿伊萨阿雅各阿吉罗索。Interesting, in Hebrews 11, it mentions Moses' parents. 啊，因为在圣地。Moses, parents, and and Moses himself. Ah, Moses, aka Moses, yeah. Or Samuel and David, aka Samuel and David. Or all the prophets of the Old Testament. Ah, jai, jai sen bi ho de shi tai. And and many of them started out as as ordinary men and women. Ah, go go ipuai tan ba du in shi yong. But they grew in faith and trust in God. And they learned how to be loyal to God and to do the will of God. In Taiwan, they be shown the key. I'm not like Sun Tan, young Xin, Xin Xin, they be shown. And we know they experienced difficult times, times of of testing, of hardship, even persecution. And in Taiwan, in the in the young Xin, the Xin Xin Xin, the great young Dong, in ah, she was cheap, young, she was kind, cold, she was kind. All those people had faith in God. And as a result, God blessed them and and used them to do wonderful things in God's purpose for the world. Ah, so yeah, so now, give me some of your shoes, in a whole new shoes, in for in time, ah, give me some of your yoke, and to do things that come. To make the the little nation of Israel a light for the nations and show the world how to to love and to serve God. Ah, we here say that now, shoes, 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 Or think for a minute of of Jesus in His humanity. Ah, then say that Jesus should be in the land of Jesus in the garden. We know that Jesus is fully God, but He's also also fully human. Jesus should be in the land of Jesus in the garden. And when Jesus was here on earth, He He trusted in God the Father. He was here on earth. He He trusted in God the Father. He He trusted in God the Father. He He trusted had faith. That after his own suffering and death on the cross, Jesus trusted that God the Father would really raise him from the dead. He sees the divine shape. He knows he is wrong. He sees he is wrong. He knows what he is saying. The divine shape. He knows what he is saying. See the result of Jesus' faith and his faithfulness to God unto death. I am going to show the sheep sheep how it will see them being put back in the sheep. That God offers now salvation to all who would come to Jesus and repent of their sins and put their faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. 上帝提供伊个救恩，甲新个活命，对全部人个成就。啊，安尼咱也同阿多在信心，只要咱会通信心，辛苦，基本上。Or think of Jesus' own disciples. 啊，咱知影基本上对耶稣多。Or the Apostle Paul, ah, Jesus or Paul, or think of Timothy's grandmother Lois or his his mother Eunice. As you go, Timothy, ye ama, oh, ye ama, go Lori. All of these people who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Ah, in Jada, you know, what the chimps in here, Anne, the temple lady. And because they remained faithful to Jesus and loyal to His gospel, God used them like mustard seeds to plant churches. All the way from Jerusalem to Rome. Ah, in the in the young sheep, they are so got he a hook in to the shop. They will have to young. Can I go outside? See, ah, ne, they are not going to. And since then, ordinary people, God has been using ordinary people over the generations, the people who put their faith in Jesus to do wonderful things for God. Ah, the Zhuan ne, oh, then ah, the boy, then then the Stai, Gui Stai, ah, do, because then sheep, they are so she. That that people have been sharing the love of God and putting that into practice, sharing the gospel now in in hundreds of different countries, hundreds of different languages. Ah, 就是安尼啊，咱不能说你讲基本上的，或者你听，甲福音，对这个世界上百无共不同文化。Ah, we we think of Macau of Taiwan. Ah, 咱亲像这个。Think of all the generations, the the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, probably the the sixth generation of Taiwanese who have heard the gospel. It's been planted in their hearts, and they passed it on to the next generation. Ah, then, 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 I go with my colleague, then, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and just keep on going. Just because of that, I go to the next generation. I'm going to the next generation. I'm going to the next generation. When we put our faith in Jesus, our sins are forgiven. And then, with mustard seed-like faith, 
God can, can use us to do great things for God's kingdom. This morning, many of us remember Dan Bok Sui, uh, Mrs. Chen. And I know that many of us were able to attend her memorial service on September the 15th. And people heard stories of her love for God and of her faith. God used her to, to bless Dan Bok Su, to bless their two sons, their wives, their grandchildren. We, we give thanks for Dan Bok Su and for Mrs. Chen for her strong Christian faith and the way that it's, it's blessed many of our lives, people who are here today. For a few minutes, I, I'd like to invite you to, to remember, remember with me now to the, the faith of our dear beloved Elder Shinanshan. Back in the end of June, uh, several of us from the church were happened to be in Taiwan and we were able to attend Elder Shur's memorial service in Taichung. I was, I personally was very deeply moved uh, at the memorial service that day and, and I learned some new things about Elder Shur I hadn't known before. And I know that over these months, those of us friends here in Toronto, we've continued to remember and thank God for Elder Sher and, and support his beloved family. Over his 62 years, Elder Sher developed a, a strong faith in Jesus Christ. He bore witness to the love of God and, and the joy of having God work in his life. I learned that Elder Shur's grandparents were Christians. And so like that mustard seed, that he also grew up in a Christian family. I learned that when his father died, young uh, Sun Anshan supported and cared for his mother and younger siblings. His faith grew there in Tainan through Sunday school and through youth group and through choirs. Later on in Taichung, he, he served on the Presbytery Youth Committee. And he, he also helped, he was involved with the, the PCT's national magazine, the, the New Messenger. He was putting his, his faith in Jesus, putting it into action, caring for other students, helping, encouraging them to grow in their faith in Jesus Christ. I read that later on as a Christian businessman, uh, Elder Sher had this, this mustard seed faith. And he learned that if God sometimes closed the door, he would open up a window, windows that he could go out and serve other people with the love of God. Uh, he, he lived out his faith in the life of the church or in the Rotary Club. Uh, I learned that Elder Sher was in very involved with the Taichung YMCA. 
，啊，伊毛伫伊个台中个迄个基督教个青年人遐来参与参战。One of the special things was that he helped the parents of elementary and high school students to to get involved in、uh, parent growth groups so that whole families could experience the love of God. 啊，伊毛伫班长讲，即青年班个吼，就是讲北部个青年班遐，啊，互因知影讲安怎来。I think all of us who, who know Elder Sure know that because of his faith in God, God gave him a love for singing. Ah, because he is a singer, so he he loved to praise God and sing the good news of God in the choir here or in the Jubilance Gospel Choir here in Toronto. Ah, in that church, that church, he had a lot of songs. Ah, how can I talk about it? He sang a lot of them. When we see his wife and his sons. And We see how his faith, Elder Sure's faith, has blessed them and has blessed all of us as well. And I found out that my, ah, she don't know this year. I go, it is Stephen. Ah, he came out in the house saying, "This year, I'm going to do this year." He told me, "Because he, the sin she took in for that, so that." We know that that life had its challenges too. I don't know. She was, she didn't have that. We know that his his faith in God was tested. I don't know. He was just a child. I, I didn't realize, but I, I heard that it was in the year 2000 that Elder Sure、uh, became very seriously ill. Ah, so in the day, in the early years, he had he did a bit of pain. And the doctors said that he may only have three or or three to six months to live. Ah, so the doctors said that he may only have three or three to six months to live. But through his strong faith in God and cooperating, working together with the medical teams. God enabled him to live for another 16 years. And she, in way, he, young sin, sin sin, he don't just all. God, in way, he, God, just he, sin like hands on. He, no one could get shot, get the gun, shot at him. May the the memory of beloved Elder Shun Anshul, and may the memory of beloved Dambok Sun, and、uh, others who are close to us, may the memories of their faith, that that mustard seed faith. Continue to inspire us and help us to glorify God. Now, let the children and the old people, ah, see them strong. Ah, in the old days, then they would come and see the people who are strong. They grow up and grow up in faith. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on. Friends, God can use all of us in our homes, at school, at work, in our retirement to to glorify God and serve God. Ah, come on. 啊！特别上帝伊嘛有法度，讲啊，咱啊伫学校啊是咱伫做行过啊，是咱甚至讲退休的时，咱啊有法度像安尼啊来传福音。Jesus said that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed， 啊，耶稣来甲咱讲，讲咱啊有亲像讲迄挂菜籽迄款的信心。May we never underestimate how God can use a small bit of faith to do great things for God and God's kingdom。啊，咱唔话咱唔贪好。去提高咱家己吼，来使用讲咱，只要咱有一点仔信心，有一点点仔信心，咱可能有通来为特别上帝做真大事情。Lastly and very quickly, Jesus teaches us in verses seven to ten how to humbly obey God. 啊，后尾我过来继续讲吼，啊，伫六加福音七章第七十到十节，安来谦卑来顺待特别上帝。Jesus describes a, a common situation in his day. There is a, a strict master who has a servant. And the servant, he knows his role in the family. He spends his day working in the fields for the master. He comes home and then he serves the master's dinner. 因都爱去田诶吼，啊去做工，啊倒来时都爱去去侍奉耶稣。And, and only after that, after all his work is done, can he sit down and enjoy his, his own dinner and relax for a while. 啊，就是讲伊爱做工了诶时，啊去侍奉因诶主人了，伊才有法度讲这个。The servant doesn't expect to be thanked by the master. 啊，咱知影伫即时阵吼，即萝卜无可能讲你诶迄个主人要甲你洗头。He simply and faithfully does his duty. Ah, 就是迄两阵啊，就是讲罗伯，伊是安尼尽力不能安尼了。Now, I don't know about you, but this description of the scene it, it kind of makes us feel a little uncomfortable, doesn't it? 
，啊，咱知影在迄个时阵，阿那个你讲的是，你敢会感感感觉讲安尼，接不起啥 ？I think most of us are glad we don't work in a in an office、uh, where the boss is is this strict and unfeeling, uncaring. 啊，咱可能就是安尼讲，啊，咱较加在，咱生在即款的时代，咱无法度讲去拄到种即款的冷酷的迄款的主啦。Thankfully, we haven't had to live in a Master-slave kind of society where we were the slave. Ah, 真感谢咱无咱无去拄到迄款的时阵安尼吼，迄款的迄款的强健主人加迄款的无好。Jesus tells this story. He's he's not recommending this kind of life, and he doesn't condemn the kind of life either. He he just observes it. This is the kind of thing that would happen in those days. 特别上帝，伊也所想咧，甲咱讲，甲咱建议，总是伊无必谴责讲，迄两种人是安怎做这款的结束。And he he uses that what his disciples knew to to teach them to teach them a lesson in humility and a lesson about faithfully serving the one who is our master. Ah, he uses that to teach them to be able to learn to be able to serve Jesus. A one, a one core thing to be able to be humble and to be able to serve the one who is our master. Friends, we we do confess we confess that God is our master. That it's God who has created us and given us life and breath. We confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. We confess that God is sovereign in all the areas of our lives. We're we're dependent on God for everything that we have. Both now and in the future, we admit that we're in no position where we can make demands of God or expect God to serve us. God owes us nothing, while we owe God everything. Jesus teaches us to obey God. And then at the end of our lives, we can tell our Lord and Master that we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. And then we can tell our Lord and Master that we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. And then we can tell our Lord and Master that we are unworthy servants. We can take no credit for any of the good that we may do because it's God who has given us the love. It's God who has given us the joy and the power to go out and, and share and serve others. Humbly and faithfully, we seek to obey God's commands and to serve the world. Now, the, the wonderful thing, the, the, the good news is that God is not like this strict master in the story. As Christians, when you, you begin to trust and obey God, you discover that, that God is good and gracious and kind. That our God is merciful and loving towards us. Ah, then that's why we should serve Him. We should do His commandments. Yet at the same time, God does make commands. Ah, but is, that is this this kind of season, we should be faithful to God. When we trust and obey God, we discover that God is indeed faithful. Ah, then that's why that's why we should serve Him. Ah, we should serve Him. And with that, with that mustard seed faith, God can use us to do great things for God, great joyful things, loving things for God. This morning we're preparing our hearts to join together in the Lord's Supper. And as we approach the Lord's Supper, we confess that we have sinned against God and, and other people. So every time we come to the Lord's table, we come humbly, we come repenting of our sins, asking God to forgive us. 
I compete. I if we have wronged or hurt or disappointed a brother and sister in Christ, we ask them to forgive us. With mustard seed faith, we, we come trusting in Jesus Christ as our Savior. Through Jesus Christ, we can experience that, that healing and wholeness. Today we share in communion, worldwide communion with brothers and sisters here in, in Canada, back in Taiwan and all around the world. We come believing in the same Lord Jesus Christ, we come together as the Lord's humble and unworthy servant. Here at the Lord's table, God promises to feed us, to nourish us, to strengthen us. God's desire is to increase our faith in Jesus Christ. And then to send us out strong as faithful servants of Jesus, to share the gospel, to share the love of Jesus with this needy world. To God be all the praise and the glory. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you sent Jesus Christ into the world to forgive our sins. Lord, we confess that we are unworthy servants. Pray that you will forgive us. And where some, if someone has wronged us, Lord, we pray that, that they can repent of their sins and we can, trusting in you, forgive them also. Lord, we pray that you will keep our church strong and whole as we all trust and rely upon Jesus Christ and his saving blood. Strengthen your church, Lord, here and around the world. Help us, Lord, to be strong in Jesus. Increase that mustard seed faith. Lord, this morning we, we give thanks and remember Dembo Tsingyu and uh, Elder, Elder Shu and Shen Zangma. We thank you, Lord, for their examples of faith and love, their joy in serving you. May the memory of them continue to inspire us. May you bless their families and all we still feel the pain of their loss. Lord, we pray that you will prepare our hearts now as we gather around the table of our Lord. May you feed us. May you increase our faith and help us to be strong in you so that we can serve you with joy and with gladness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name.